Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Samira Tilly, Industry Marketing Manager at Assemble Systems, an Autodesk company. In today's webinar, we will look at our Navisworks publisher for Assemble. Now let's get started. It is my pleasure to introduce you to Tim Kelly, Senior Product Manager at Assemble. Go ahead, Tim. Thanks, Samira. And just for time's sake today, I'm going to leave it as, uh, as Samira introduced me. I'm Tim Kelly, uh, Product Manager with Assemble. Uh, we're going to go ahead and dive into the agenda. Um, so today's agenda is I'm going to briefly introduce Assemble uh, for those of you that are new to Assemble. Uh, we'll talk about uh, an overview of our uh, new feature release, uh, which is the Navisworks Publisher. I'll dive into some of the key benefits and then go through a brief workflow demo. Um, and then we'll leave some time at the end for Q&A. Assemble Systems, uh, Assemble Insight product is a cloud-based solution that allows teams to aggregate models and organize quantities. Um, so with that, when you import models into Assemble from uh, Revit or AutoCAD or now Navisworks formats supported, we'll get into that in just a minute, um, you can slice and dice and add conditioning and um, organize those quantities however useful for your project. Typically speaking, we see a lot of users in the estimating space organize their uh, quantities to uh, feed their estimates and drive their quantity takeoff experience. Uh, additionally, we see users doing this in value engineering or uh, leveraging those quantities for uh, production management and tracking and trending what's going on in the field. Uh, a, a ton of different use cases around how um, they leverage that data, that visual, and, and that quantity representation there. Our approach has always been around organizing and, and sharing this out broadly across your team. Uh, so Assemble's offering is an unlimited user uh, model where you can um, set that up for your, your project or for your office and make that broadly accessible to the entire project team. Invite any others in that you would want to share this information out with um, and um, collaborate around that data. Um, so what do, what do we really focus on? I, I mentioned it just a minute ago, but really specifically, uh, we focus on that model conditioning, the ability to take in design content, um, take in those models, and uh, layer in additional metadata, and then pivot or filter that information out uh, for the various workflows um, and information on the, the right side there. Um, but an example really quickly of that is if I want to condition that data with something like a uh, work package and then isolate it down from there to an area. Um, I can really uh, specifically dial in, slice and dice, um, uh, group sort and filter my model uh, to produce the visual and the set of data that uh, I'm interested in. Uh, for those on the call that um, might come more from an estimating background and aren't particularly aware of Navisworks, I, I'd say for those of us in the BIM space, uh, coming from the industry, this was my daily driver for a number of years. Um, it is uh, the tool out there that primarily focuses on uh, class detection and, and organization of your coordination efforts uh, early on in the project. A lot of organizations primarily use uh, Navisworks for their review tool where they can aggregate those models and, and organize them for review. Um, and then additionally, there are components in there that allow for timeline simulations for uh, you to step through and, and, and simulate your model, animate your model, <clears throat> provide uh, various looks at exactly uh, what you want to do. Um, so with that said, Navisworks supports a wide number of model formats. Um, we really specifically looked at our customer requests and, and uh, from that base uh, we've isolated and focused on a handful of model formats. Uh, this really covers a, a wide spectrum of, of models that we have inbound, but um, those formats are um, Revit and AutoCAD uh, that we already have publishers for native and those tools we now consume uh, as well through uh, Navisworks. Um, and then Smart Plant, PDMS, PDS, MicroStation. And then uh, really exciting uh, for me at least uh, is uh, Archicad and Tecla. I know there's been a ton of interest around this in the past and we uh, specifically wanted to spend time investigating and focusing on how we can incorporate that information from uh, uh, from Tecla, that's a, that's a huge customer request of ours, um, as well as Archicad. With the Smart Plant and PDS, PDMS, um, that's really allowing us to step into uh, new environments where we weren't previously in the process uh, field and as you can see in the image below, the 
oil and gas sector, the um, customers of ours that work in uh, civil structure projects and, and um, process-oriented facilities, uh, we wanted to incorporate that um, workflow into our portfolio as well. Uh, so you can use Assemble for all of those various projects. Within the pre-construction environment and using Assemble uh, to organize um, this content, um, that publisher allows you to, again, as I mentioned before, uh, set up views and create um, isolated work sets of information you want to share across your team. Um, and we are cloud-based, so it allows for really simple access. You invite someone into the project, and they can jump right into the particular view that you've shared uh, for their use. Uh, additionally, um, we wanted to uh, simplify the process of uh, sharing this information out as you step through the coordination process. In coordination efforts, you may have uh, a number of subcontractors contributing models and you're organizing and running clash uh, uh, checking and uh, uh, your coordination efforts within Navisworks. Uh, you get to a certain point where uh, you want to push that out for a review and, and organization of quantities that may be associated or uh, potentially subdivide it and, and, and do additional things where um, uh, other members of your team can step in and review that information. And so we wanted to really uh, bring that to the table as a, a workflow. So in terms of benefits of, of, of those of you that are already using Assemble, uh, more typically with your Revit and AutoCAD models um, produced um, from the design team, this is going to expand that use case beyond design so that you can now incorporate those subcontractor models and, and do those similar workflows that you were doing previously uh, where that's expanding beyond just your, um, whether it be your estimating team or your BIM group that's doing the quantification efforts uh, on models. Uh, from there, um, looking at other ways that we have benefits for the construction team overall, Assemble offers a mobile application that allows you to review these in, uh, in the field or on your iOS device, anyhow. And with our previous offering of uh, our limit to Revit and AutoCAD formats, uh, we really limited the interaction that the field teams would get because we're not incorporating those uh, trade coordination models where you actually have the fabrication model incorporated as well. Um, so what we wanted to do is expand that so that you now have this availability within your mobile app so that you can use those um, uh, fabrication uh, level models, the detail there, to track what's been installed, um, issues that may arise in the field and incorporate that back into the assemble overall workflow. We also wanted to uh, expand our work in place and, and um, uh, package tracking where you can provide uh, visual look aheads, track the um, overall inventory against what's been installed um, and, and step through that from there. Uh, with all that said, we've kind of got a lot of customer interaction where we've, we've looked at these benefits together. We've, we've kind of analyzed what um, we want to focus on in terms of uh, what sort of data we're able to incorporate, what sort of model formats we wanted to focus on. Uh, but with that said, let's go ahead and kind of jump into some of the key uh, components and um, step through the workflow within um, publishing a model from Navisworks into Assemble. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into a uh, coordination model. Uh, this was provided to us by our friends at Satterfield and Ponticus. Um, this is a project they worked on, and it has their uh, various models uh, pulled together uh, through their coordination efforts. Uh, one quick note that I want to um, isolate or, or focus on is that um, a project like this um, may be a large-scale project, and you might not necessarily need uh, the entire project set um, incorporated. Uh, so we've given the ability within this environment to um, isolate or hide other objects that you don't want during the publish. Um, and so what I can do is I can go ahead and select, let's just isolate a particular area. Oh, let me change my resolution here. Um, and I'm going to hide unselected. While that's catching up, I'm going to go ahead and step into another model I have loaded. Um, what I have the ability to do in the publisher, in addition to what you may experience in, in Revit or AutoCAD today, um, is that we wanted to offer the ability to um, more quickly roll models together, as well as ignore things that might not be information you want to include in the publish process. So if I want to go ahead and step through my publisher, I'm going to um, create a project create a model, let's call this uh, structure. And notice two quick things here. First, I have merged similar formats. So if we have, um, uh, let's say, a, a number of DGN files and then 
uh, some Tecla files or RC and, and then some uh, DWG files. Uh, we're just going to merge those together for you if you select this. It's going to rename uh, each of those files uh, to whatever container you've uh, selected. Um, and then you can uh, kind of organize it from there and, and simplify uh, the, the number of containers or model uh, groups that you've published. Uh, you also have another checkbox here that says skip detail items. That's going to be welds, bolts, rebar, connections, text. Um, and, and that's just to simplify the model that you're bringing in. If you're not interested in those individual components, you can actually ignore uh, bringing those in altogether and skip those um, components. In that case, what um, you could potentially, if, if you, let's say, didn't want to bring in all of the, the text values, the connection values of that information, but you did want to bring in the rebar, an option is to go ahead and uh, publish by first ignoring and then go through and publish a second set of just the rebar and incorporate that in uh, with those detail items, but by, by first hiding that. Um, so we're going to then finish out the publish process and, and hit publish, and then uh, those models are going to go and land in assemble. So let's go ahead and jump into assemble. Um, so I've isolated a particular area in assemble, and you can see <clears throat> what I didn't go through was the process of renaming these. In assemble, we have the ability to then rename the files as needed, uh, so I could simplify these names if necessary. But I'm going to go ahead and just quickly... Um, jump through x-ray mode so I can kind of see as I flip through my different uh, models. I can see my structural file. I can see uh, my duct work over here for the uh, mechanical yard, uh, the duct for the floor. Um, and so I can kind of uh, really quickly look at what's going on there. And then just uh, for those of you that are new to Assemble, as I mentioned, we have the ability now to layer in additional metadata. If I want to go through, I'm going to just select an object really quick. At the top here, I'm going to see assemble properties. Those are specific to assemble, and I can bring in uh, other grouping or uh, metadata that I want to uh, condition or um, classify this model with. Um, and then I have the incorporated model properties that were created here. Um, and I can see I'm actually selected on a Revit component, so that looks... Um, like a really robust set of information. Let's go ahead and switch over to uh, mechanical component. And, and, and just for quick reference here, uh, what you're going to see in the uh, model properties, uh, both instance and type, is exactly what you would see and, and what values are available within Navisworks here. So if I select a component in Navisworks, I'm going to see a number of properties that have come through, whether as part of the IFC export or uh, that model save when, when um, Navisworks loads that file. Uh, depending on the export process or depending on the conversion, um, different items have different levels of data. Uh, some items, um, let's say uh, IFC from Tecla, includes a really uh, large set of data and, and others um, uh, might not have very much information, but you're going to get uh, what you have available within Navisworks. Uh, from there, as I mentioned, you can start to layer in that additional information. So if we wanted to uh, classify or organize, uh, you know, our pipe rack or um, uh, this set of information, I can really quickly um, grab a chunk of objects, um, organize or classify that content, and then create a uh, visibility rule to create a view on that. Um, I'm going to quickly jump into another project and, and show just kind of uh, organizing that sort of uh, information. And let's say I want to um, evaluate what properties I have available from the model. Um, I'm going to grab a pipe here, um, let that load the properties, and then create a, a visibility uh, set on just that set of properties. Um, so if I look down here, I can see a uh, number of PDS uh, data points, um, and I'm going to go ahead and find... Uh, my line here. So uh, let's imagine I take this line and I'm going to copy that um, and I'm going to create a rule here that says I just want to see line and that's a model property line and I'm going to paste that value uh, and update that rule and so we're doing a search throughout uh, the set of models here uh, to just find that line value and I see a number of components here um, and then if I wanted to go ahead and grab all of my pipe segments and aggregate my length, I can um, change, I have a length available as a model property here, so I can change that to length, and I can see my total linear footage of uh, that particular pipe. Uh, so I have a lot of um, flexibility with the data set and information I can, I can grab whenever I pull that information in. All right, uh, one more quick example here is a Tecla model. 
um, same same scenario. I've I've uh, published this model, and in this case, I've ignored the bolts um, and the connection details here. Um, but I've got all of my IFC properties exported by Tecla, and I'm able to uh, kind of navigate through and see things that might be pertinent to uh, what I want to get here. And uh, in this case, I may want to grab all of my columns. Um, so I'm going to isolate really quick my name and then um, aggregate my total linear footage of, of columns here to get uh, total quantity. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to go ahead and open this up and say by IFC name, go ahead and grab column, update this, let's discard those changes. And I should see all of my columns here, and then I'm just going to grab everything that's uh, listed and go ahead and switch uh, that quantity value to linear foot. Um, and then in this case, um, I could really kind of take a step further and uh, leverage possibly a different property um, to analyze by color. Um, so if I wanted to look at um, the different, if I have maybe different grades or different materials, um, I, can, I can use my color by property to isolate or to, to, to view those differently. So let's use material. I'm not sure what I'm going to see here, but uh, we're going to go ahead and color by property. Um, and we're going to say material. And I'm going to see a couple of different things here. Let's make that a little more visual so we can see what's going on. Uh, make those blue, make those green. Um, so now I can see kind of a breakdown across my model here of, of those individual components. Um, and if I kill this rule and remove that rule, then I'm going to see uh, the other materials that come in and, and, and again, kind of review um, by color coding those as, as I um, kind of look across this model. Um, really easy to um, switch those quickly and see uh, different color coding um, and also really easy to uh, filter and organize that content. Overall, I, I kind of bounced through a handful of different workflows and different use cases, but if you're familiar with the symbol, um, you know it's a really flexible environment to manage that data and organize content, ultimately share that out with your team. Um, personally, I'm really excited that we now have the ability to incorporate files or uh, 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 model components from Navisworks uh, because it's such a widely used uh, tool by uh, construction teams uh, doing their clash detection and coordination efforts uh, where those are the build by models. That's, that's your fabrication set and that information is you know, taking it down uh, one more step from uh, the engineering models. So, I'm very excited to offer this as a, a, a new capability and a symbol and really excited to see what our users are able to do with it because uh, there's a lot more data here available now and there's a lot more uh, various different workflows that we haven't seen with um, our limited reach of, of Revit and AutoCAD to date. So uh, really excited to see uh, what, uh, what everyone is able to do with uh, the Navisworks data set.